Okay, so in week one of Electronic Design 1, we have the GeoFilter, Snapchat GeoFilter project. Um, so this video is going to show you how to do that. Um, the Snapchat Geo Project Worksheet is in here, GeoFilter Project Worksheet. Definitely check that out um, before doing anything. But we have a Photoshop and an Illustrator template. I'm actually just going to download um, this one. So click on the little arrow, push download from week one, right space. It takes a little bit for it to download. Um, and we'll take a look at that in Photoshop once that downloads. So let's just go into our downloads. It looks like it's done downloading. Um, we'll click on that. It's a PSD file, so it has all the layers included. Um, so if we take a look, these are the buffers. So 200 fit 210 pixels from the top and bottom. So keep all important text. And if you have super important imagery, you might not want to have too much of it going into the buffer zone. I think some images and some graphics can go into the buffer, but definitely not any text. Um, so those are the buffers. Remember to turn these off before exporting out your PNG file for submission to Snapchat. Um, so here are the sample filters. Um, Sweet Dreams is on currently, but we can have Just Chillin', which they have in there, Huntington Beach, and the Meatpacking District of New York City uh, geofilter that is included. And then they even added in this barbecue background, so an image of the area. Um, so I'm going to be creating a geofilter design for Devlin Trail, and I kind of did this quick... Uh, sketch on an envelope with a sharpie, but you can see it's just going to be super chunky and simple little illustration. I'm actually going to do it in Illustrator and then um, bring it into this template. Um, there also is an Illustrator template. I could use either, but I just kind of like Photoshop better um, for template um, reasons, I guess. I like the template better in Photoshop. So I'll just export out probably a JPEG or actually no, a PNG file from Illustrator once I'm done with my um, illustration and then I'll um, export out the PNG from Photoshop. Um, just check it out in this in here and then export it out. So I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So let's open up Illustrator. Um, so the size for these um, Actually, I can open up the AI file template as well. So it's very similar to the Photoshop one. It's just up to you to decide, you know, which um, program you want to use. I think for doing illustrations, Illustrator is obviously a little bit better. But um, so here's the layers panel. Uh, we can actually, you know, turn everything off. Um, it's very similar to the Photoshop, but this will be the canvas that we'll be working from. And then I can do a file place. And actually bring in, oh, why can I do that? Maybe we'll just make a new document. File new. I'll just say 8.5 by 11 is fine. Create uh, file place. Um, so my little sketch I did is right here. I brought that in. So I can even kind of like trace this or just really look at it. Um, I'm pretty much just going to be using um, the brush tool to do this, so nothing fancy. Uh, so click. You can do whatever you want as far as you know how you want to get this. T the how do you, how you get the achieve achieved look that you're going for? Um, if you like um, using a different program, I mean, you totally can, and, and then just bring it into Photoshop. Uh, but I, I just think I'm just going to kind of use the brush tool and nothing, like I said, nothing fancy at all. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go around and get the basic outlines and then fill in the shapes um, with the brush tool. And I will kind of turn on the video once I've done that. Okay, so I kind of created um, some of these lines with the brush tool. Um, I can take this and do a Command L to lock it down. Um, this, oops, I think I can anyway. Um, and then I had to move my thing here. Okay, so what we can do is we can kind of select 
just click and drag to select the stuff. Push Shift and then deselect. Click on this to deselect um, that image in the background so that I just have my brush strokes selected. And if I do Object, Path, Outline Stroke, that will outline all of the strokes that the, that the brush made. And then I can actually go to, if this is not open, we can go Window, Pathfinder, open up the Pathfinder tool, which actually helps to like bring things together so I can bring all these shapes together it's the, with the unite option so I'm just going to unite everything and that creates one one shape now I do have some holes here and there that don't look so great so I mean I can go back in and um, make sure it's not selected and just kind of go over those quickly this is probably like not the cleanest way to do this there's other ways of doing this but um, it works okay for me, so. Um, so I'll select that stroke that I made, object, path, outline stroke, and then select these two things, and then just do the unite with the pathfinder again, and that looks pretty good. So um, I've got a start. Now I can actually use the smooth tool if I need to, and I can just kind of smooth out some of these edges. Um, definitely have a couple of rough areas here down here that I don't really love. So make sure it's selected before you use the Smooth tool. Um, you want to see those those blue anchor points before you end up seeing those, before you end up using the, the Smooth tool. Um, sometimes it helps, and sometimes you can actually take it too far to where it doesn't really look very good. Um, if I do a Command Plus, I can kind of get in there, and if I, if I want to delete an anchor point, I can go to the Pen tool, hold down, and just delete out an anchor point. Um, actually don't want to do that, Command Z, but something along these lines. And this is not amazing, but I'm kind of trying to do this quickly. Of course, what you guys end up doing, I hope that you spend a little bit more time um, you know, actually crafting your designs, either using Illustrator or, you know, whichever one you prefer. Some people really like Photoshop and you can do that, but Illustrator works really well, obviously for illustrations, right? So, um, so something like that works pretty well. Um, it's a little rough, but I'm not going for that perfect look by any means. So I'm just going to kind of keep on going. I might create some shapes, um, to make these tulips here. I'm going to pause the video. Okay. So I'm going to make the tulip um, shape. It's pretty stylized. So we'll just do a shift and click and drag with the ellipse tool. Um, I'm just going to just put a stroke on it. I'm going to change the stroke to just black. Um, and then I will do another command C for copy, command V for paste, and then push shift and then just click and make this a little bit smaller. Um, and then we want to do um, op hold down option on the keyboard and then just click and drag to get copies made. And this should work pretty well. So if you push shift down and click on each of these, you should, and hold it down the whole time, you should get all three of them selected at the same time. And then if we go to the alignment tool over here, make sure you have your properties panel open. I'm in Essentials Classic. Um, and then go to more options and we can actually distribute the spacing in between the horizontal space basically. So if we click on that, it'll just make it all even. And then let's just grab all of these as one chunk and try and just get that pink line to show us where it is going to be um, perfectly aligned. And then I'm just going to actually kind of shrink these up just a, just squish them this way just a little bit. Um, the width is 0.59, so I'll try to get the width to be somewhere around there for both of those circles. And then I'll just, actually, I might redistribute again um, and then make sure it's grabbing all of these, trying to get it to intersect perfectly. Okay, that, that I think that looks okay. Um, and then we click and drag to get everything selected. And then this is where I'm going to use my shape builder tool. So click on this over here. Um, so to get to get solid shapes, you just click and you have that plus arrow, uh, that plus button next to the uh, arrow icon. But if you push option on the keyboard, you get the minus. And so you can start su subtracting shapes. So I'll just 
hold down option and click on everything that I just kind of want to delete. Um, got a couple wayward little dots here. Um, okay. And so this is the shape that I really wanted uh, for the top of the tulip. Um, I'm going to leave them outlined for now and kind of bring it over here. And I might even kind of squish it just a little bit and size it down, sh holding shift, and maybe even squish it a little bit more. And then I'll create that stem shape. Um, you can use the pen tool. So click and click and while holding down, um, drag out that uh, point there with these handles. And then we can actually change the stroke profile if we come up into stroke. We can make it like um, not all the same, basically. So I can kind of make it like, uh, oops, I didn't mean to. And then if we want to click off of here, I just can go on the arrow tool. But that kind of created a uh, different kind of stroke there, which I kind of like. Um, maybe I'll just fill this in with white for now. And then I'll do an arrange from the properties panel and bring to front. Um, maybe something like that. I'm not sure if I'm totally crazy about this other stroke type of stroke, but I just wanted to show you how that can be done. And then we can create the little grass shapes, probably pretty similar to how we did the, um, or I might use the paintbrush tool if that works better, just to make it match the style of the rest of it, because it's actually getting a little too clean looking, um, mixed with, so, um, and then I can try and make the sun. So basically we'll just push shift, and get the sun shape kind of started in there. And then do it again, Command C, Command V to copy that and paste that. And then I'm gonna make it bigger and maybe just kind of not quite a perfect circle shape anymore. And then do another Command C, Command V. And I might bring that down just a little bit closer. And then I can push Shift and while holding on Shift, select everything and align it perfectly. And then from here, kind of select everything and I believe I can just start using the shape builder tool now so if I push option I can just start deleting um, these extra shapes I think I should just be able to delete the lines that I don't really want anymore I'm, I'm holding down option the whole time um, and that's basically kind of what I wanted I don't actually love this line it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to so I'll just delete it um, and maybe I'll just kind of try again. Um, but you get the idea. So if I can get this looking kind of the way I want it to, it's not too bad. So click and shift this. I'm, I'm, I don't think I need these other... I'm just taking this shape and the circle shape, shape folder, pushing down option, and then just going to click on those things. And that there we go. There's our, you know, basic shapes. Um, and then I'll just continue building out the rest of this design with probably the, um, probably the, the paintbrush tool. Okay, so um, I realized I made a little bit of a mistake. So I kind of moved everything aside. I'm just going to click and drag and get everything selected. I'm going to use the shape builder tool and just click to click on those shapes to get those shapes to show up. Um, Okay, and then if we want to fill in these with color, um, we can do that. So I kind of added in some colors there. If I zoom in on this, I did add a white stroke to this, um, to this black shape, which is not looking great, but um, I kind of noticed there's some problems here. So if I go to the pen tool and do delete anchor point, I can delete, oops, if I zoom in, I can delete some of these shapes um, that I don't want in here. And sometimes if you don't get an actual anchor point, it yells at you. But um, make sure you have it selected when you're trying to do this. 